All right, January 2nd, and as you can see, we did get a little dusting of snow. Just heading out to the garage. Neighbors are out shoveling and snow blowing. I'm in my shorts. I'm just going out to turn the heat up in the garage so we can get out there and uh, work a little while later once it's warmed up a bit. It's probably about uh, six or seven degrees Celsius in here anyway. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. That's about 7 degrees out here, just over 40 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll get the little uh, garage heater cranked up. My faithful little heater served me well for the last, I don't know, 8 years probably. And we'll come back out and we'll play after breakfast. All right, warm welcome back to the garage. We are now inside and we've just started doing a little project this morning. I thought I would uh, have a look at my old uh, distributor uh, wiring and I thought I might be able to rescue the high tension wire from the old cap and then exchange the boots out from the, the uh, new cable which is too short. So here's a comparison of the cables and you can see that the new cable is significantly shorter than the old cable so what I've done is I've just exchanged the boots from the new cable onto the old cable and this is the old boot on the new cable not to confuse you and I think what we're going to do is we're going to use this and I was talking to Doc the uh, prospective owner of this car and we've decided that we would like the clean look without the backer on the coil so since we have the length that we need now with the new old wire we're going to remove that backing piece and just install the coil I may actually try to see what it looks like installing the old cover piece which might be kind of nice to talk to uh, you know cover the top of the coil uh, that would maybe make it look a little nicer in there and a little neater in there but anyway we'll see uh, what we decide to do whether we use this topper piece or not actually just thinking about it I won't be able to use the topper piece because these little ears actually attached to these bolts here so I'd have to use the uh, backing piece to be able to use the topper piece so that's not going to work so I think we'll just go with the uh, the bare coil look let's uncover that Bosch logo alright okay. guys we've got that uh, coil resituated so without the backer piece with the uh, new cable and you can see we've got lots of slack in the cable so that makes me happy it looks good nice and neat and tidy so let's move on to another project. Okay, as I mentioned yesterday, if you'd watched yesterday's video, um, I had mentioned that the next project was going to be the uh, number five here on the list, the window tracks and switches for the power windows. So I don't believe the door panels have ever been off on this car. So I thought it might be good after 40 years to get in there and lube the mechanism that works the uh, power windows. I'd mentioned that the power windows are a little bit intermittent on this car. I don't really think it's the inner workings of the door or the motor. I believe it's just the switch contacts that need to be cleaned. Since this car hasn't re really been uh, driven for the last, I'm going to say, 15 years or so, um, those contacts could probably use a good cleaning. The, the windows do operate, just sometimes it takes uh, you know a couple taps of the button for them to uh, actually react. So we're going to do a little bit of preemptive maintenance, let's say, and we'll take that door panel off, lube those tracks and the mechanism, I think there's a cable mechanism within the door. So we'll uh, pull those off and have a look, lube what we can, and then we'll go after cleaning the switches. So that's the project for today. All right, we're gonna attempt to get this door panel off. Again, I'm no alpha expert, but I have an idea what I need to do to get this off. There are some hidden screws involved and uh, I'll show you those along the way. Uh, I do not have to uh, take off the window crank as this has power windows as mentioned. So there is a hole here that just uh, has a plug fitted here's the actual plug and the reason they put this in here is they were quite thoughtful these alpha designers they figured that their power windows would probably go south at some point in time so they provided you with this little window crank kit this manual crank to insert in the hole and to crank your windows up and down manually should your electric motor go out or should you have any other issue lifting your window so 
Wasn't that thoughtful of the designers. Anyway, let's get to work and we'll start removing some screws. All right, I think the first uh, fasteners that we're gonna go after, uh, there is one behind here, this black plastic panel. So you need a thin bladed screwdriver to pop this panel off. So we're obviously gonna be very careful getting these trim pieces off. We don't wanna break anything. There's apparently also some screws behind here, behind this panel, so this needs to be pried off. And I believe there are some screws behind this trim strip here that also need to uh, come off. So this trim strip has to be peeled off and put back in this slot. So hopefully everything uh, doesn't get damaged when I'm taking this apart. There's a little bit of risk involved with this, but hopefully there's a reward at the end. And all of these trim pieces will go back together as they should. So uh, I'm not sure how much I'll be able to show you because the confines are pretty tight here. Got a pad uh, just blocking the door, make sure it doesn't hit anything and get damaged. So I think we'll just go ahead and start it. We're gonna, like I mentioned, we'll go after this piece first, and I'll take you along where I can at least and show you those hidden fasteners. All right, here's the first trim piece removed, just this little black piece of plastic that's hiding the screw up here. It's got a little bit, uh, a couple of little tabs here on the back that you just need to uh, pry up carefully. Again, 40 year old plastic, so you gotta be careful. Anyway, we'll go after this Phillips screw and this door handle should come right off. All right, the door handle and the little escutcheon piece are off safely. So we're gonna now go after these screws in behind this trim panel here. Again, small screwdriver. And what I'm using is just a, uh, a little eyeglass screwdriver to get in behind there. So something like this, something very fine pointed. I also have another one here, it's a slightly bigger one, um, should I need it. But uh, we're generally starting with this one first just to get in there and not do any damage. There's a little bit of an opening here. I can probably pry from here first of all. So I'm finding the, uh, the loose spots and then we're kind of working our way around. All right, there's that little plastic piece removed and I found it was easiest just to get a start with a blade in behind there, the screwdriver blade, and then sort of just kind of run it around the edge and pull it out of the recess. There's a little recess here in the uh, plastic uh, or in the, uh, the rubber here on the door handle. So you just want to sort of guide that out of the recess. And in behind there, you can see the screws, one there, one there, for the armrest. There's also going to be more screws below this trim piece here. So we'll go ahead and we'll move that next after we take these two screws out. Actually, let's remove this trim piece first. We'll take all the screws out at the same time. So let's go after this guy. Okay, the door handle has been removed. There's three locations. There's one here at the rear, right there. And there's two here at the front. So those have been removed. There's some funny looking things that look like they're screws, but they're actually just molded plastic. So uh, let's move on to the next thing. We're gonna undo the fasteners here at the bottom of the panel, all the way across the bottom. And then we'll remove the two fasteners at the top that we can see. And I think that should be able to get the panel off. The door pocket stays on, I believe. There might be one fastener at the bottom that I need to undo, but we'll get there soon. We'll see if it comes off after I move those aforementioned screws along the bottom and along the top. I don't know if this will work or not. I've just got you propped up on the seat so I can't really see what, you've, what you can see. But uh, we've got all those screws out now. I've just popped the uh, panel off of the little clips off the inside here. It looks like it's moving. So we'll just carefully continue on here. And that panel just drops away. As you can see, hopefully. There's the inner workings of the door. Doesn't look like anybody's been in here before. This is the, uh, I guess they call this the water shield. This is similar to what they have on a uh, Triumph car. Keep the uh, water from the back of the panel. So this panel should also just lift up and away, although I don't need to remove this. So I'm thinking I may just leave this because I just want to basically get to this part of the door and inside this cavity, so I don't believe I'll need to remove this piece. So it's probably better just to leave this on here and not disturb it. Probably can't see what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we're just talking about this top piece here. I don't really need to remove this, um, so I'm not gonna disturb it. I think this is part of the inner seal here, or the fuzzy seal on inside here. So all I need to do is basically get at this cavity here and maybe at the mechanism behind this tape and we'll uncover that in a minute. But um, really what I need to do is I need to be able to get into here. So I can get in here, so all is good. We'll leave this panel where it is. We'll just clean it up before we put the other panel back on. There is the door panel down there. 
and as mentioned the door pocket stays on. Uh, you could probably uh, take a little bit of a look at the back of this panel. Actually it looks to be in pretty good shape. You can see the mounting tabs there. But yeah, it looks good. Looks like the original masking tape is coming off the bottom that covered the staples. But uh, looks pretty good there. Good shape. Alright, we just removed all of the black tape that was covering over the holes here and we've got a little bit of a rubber uh, gasket or grommet here which I can remove and I believe that gets to the motor for the power windows so we'll uh, just leave that there and tape that back up. We've got some black duct tape that we'll use to do that. Anyway, let me grab a flashlight and I just want to show you the door bottoms. They look to be in really good shape. You can see they've been uh, rust proofed in here. So let me grab a flashlight so you can see this a little bit better. I need to uh, have a look at the uh, the cable mechanism for the door anyway and here are the points that I want to lube here on these rollers for example. So let's uh, get a flashlight and have a better look. So yeah, they look super clean inside the bottoms of the doors as well. You can see they're right into the back corner. So that looks good. Mechanism look good. So again, we're going to lube these areas here that we can see. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to lube the uppers uh, where the rollers are, but we'll definitely do the bottoms here. That will help out for sure. You can probably maybe just see the motor mechanism in there. Let me see if I can get this light in here. Probably just see the motor there. And that's where the cable winds. So it's a cable lift and lower system. So cable attached to the glass here. See that? So it's kind of a different uh, winding mechanism. Cable attaches to the glass there. So there you go. Window tracks are here. Felts look pretty good actually. So there's the inside of an Alfa Romeo Spider door with power windows. Alright, let's get busy lubing. We're just going to use some white lithium grease in here. And we'll do a liberal spraying. Try not to coat everything too badly. But uh, let's give that a, a spray. And then we'll probably uh, move it up and down just to lube it a bit before we put the panel back on. Just to make sure that the mechanism is moving freely. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that before we put the panel back on. Alright guys, it's another day. Um, I did decide to go ahead and remove that top panel. Just to see if there's a little bit better access in this panel below it to get to the uh, top pulleys. I think there are two pulleys here and two pulleys here that work this wire mechanism. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to lubricate those. I don't think... I'll do a bit more investigation and see if I can get up there through this opening to see if I can do a little bit of lubrication up there. I'm happy though I was able to lubricate the two bottom pulleys and uh, it seems to be operating a little bit better now. The battery is probably a little weak because I've been playing with this, but uh, let's show you how this works. So we're up fully right now. Let's go down and you can see the wires moving. It actually moves fairly quickly to the down position. So there it is all the way down. Let's go up. A little bit slower on the up. It's cold in the garage. And like I said, the battery voltage is probably a little bit low. But uh, working as it should. So that's good. We'll, uh, like I said, we'll see if we can lubricate those upper pulleys. If not, we're just going to re relocate the uh, water shield here. And let me turn the car off. We'll just relocate the water shield and uh, we'll put the panel back on. We did check the wiring up here, make sure all the connections look good, and they do. I would rewire it if required, but everything looks fine up here. I'll probably put a little bit of uh, dielectric grease just in these connections here, just to uh, help with uh, keeping some moisture out and some corrosion out in the future. But this whole door interior looks to be in great condition, much like the rest of the car. All right, let's uh, see what we can do here. We'll finish this panel up and we'll move to the other side. All right, we've resealed the uh, door so we can put the exterior panel back on. So all looks good to go. So hopefully everything is lined up. We've made sure that these panel are aligned with the holes behind. You gotta make sure you do that. So those are in and we're just about to put the exterior panel back on. So let's go ahead and do All that. Right, we're going to move on to the driver's side and as you may notice I haven't put the door handle or the crank back on. I figure that's going to facilitate me cleaning that door panel a little bit better. I'm going to do an interior detail so I figured it'd be easier to clean that panel as a flat panel versus trying to go around the crank and the pull for the door. So we'll leave it like that temporarily and we'll move on to the driver's side door here and do the same process. Got a rubber mat up against the 250 so we don't bump anything. And uh, 
got the screwdrivers ready and we'll go to town do the same process here on the driver's side. All right guys, Wednesday the 5th of January 2022 and to be honest with you I don't know where I left off yesterday. Um, I did manage to get this door panel off and we got the uh, rollers lubricated with the uh, white lithium grease. I think I uh, went in after uh, checking the operation of this power window which used to be the best of the two power windows as far as operation was concerned but uh, apparently we're having some issues with the switch. So uh, it's kind of a momentary uh, operation. You gotta really push hard down on the switches. So as mentioned, uh, one of my jobs is to remove the switches, which is uh, becoming a bit of a challenge. Uh, let me just go around to the other side of the car here. Um, I guess there's a certain process to get these switches out of the console. I was pretty sure there'd just be tabs that you'd have to push and they'd sort of pop up, but uh, I'm not, able to get that done so what I've been working on is trying to remove this access panel here on the side as you can see so I can get under and sort of pinch the uh, the little tangs of those switches to get them up and out of the console without damaging anything so I really need to get those out to have a look at them to see if they can be cleaned at all and if they can't be cleaned then I'm going to need to uh, order probably a couple of new switches like I said they work but very intermittently and you've got to really push hard on them so I'm pretty sure the contacts are pretty dirty or even to the point where they need to be replaced. So those switches, just uh, for interest sake, they are $70 US each. So they're not switches that I want to have to replace, but if I have to, I have to. So anyway, let me uh, show you what's happening with the uh, driver's side uh, door window operation when I push that switch. Let me go around to the other side. We'll be right back. All right, I don't think these windows uh, work very quickly, even on the warmest of days, and it's only about 9 degrees Celsius out here in the garage, so it's definitely uh, a little bit harder for these motors to work, I think, in a colder environment, and the mechanisms to work in a colder environment. So 9 degrees Celsius, I think it's just shy of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Anyway, we'll give it a shot. Let me crank the key on here, and uh, we'll hit the button. And I doubt we're going to get too much action today. So I'm pressing the button. And we've got a little bit of movement. Again, so that's fully up. Let's go back down. So we do have movement of the motor. The motor works, but uh, I'm pushing the switch now. And like I said, it's kind of intermittent as to when they want to actually work or not so definitely a switch related issue motors work fine just they don't operate on the switch very well all right let me uh, see if I can get those switches out without breaking anything we'll come back incidentally I wanted to make note of one thing for anybody that's doing this project in the future um, there are two different size screws that hold on the door handle to the panel one is significantly longer uh, than the other and I just want to make sure that you know that the longer screw goes down to the sort of the bottom location of the handle. Here's the top location, so this is a shorter screw. Longer screw goes down here, so I don't want you to break your glass if you happen to put the longer screw in the top location. So just thought I would point that out for anybody that's needing to do this job and end up getting these screws uh, in the wrong location. All right, managed to find a bit of an easier way to get at those switches. So here are the little tabs that you are trying to push, these little tabs here, to get those switches to be able to pop out. So here is the back of the switch. And I'm kind of wanting to be able to get inside here to clean the terminals, but it doesn't really look like there's a good way to get in there. I'll do a little bit more investigation, but I don't think the switch can be taken apart. We'll see. Might be able to pry the sides off here. Um, so I'm going to try to... Uh, get into the switch and clean it. No harm done if I break it because as I mentioned it's not really working as it should right now anyway. So uh, wiring looks good under there. Looks nice and tidy and neat. I don't think anybody's ever been under there. So uh, yeah, a good way to do this is to remove the ashtray versus removing the side panel which is a bit more of a pain especially if you have a radio installed. I think there's a tie bar that goes across the back it's got a couple of small nuts on it that's very difficult to get at. So I guess if you had didn't have the radio, it'd be a little easier to get the side compartment off to get under your, your hand under there. But going through the ashtray compartment is definitely the easiest route. All right, we're going to do a little bit of uh, marking on these switches to make sure that I know which, one, which way was up and down. 
and uh, I don't want to get the wiring mixed up between the left and the right hand side so we'll just mark these connectors as well while we're there and uh, we'll do see what we can do to uh, maybe get these uh, switches lubricated a little bit and working better not holding my breath alright success so far we did manage to get the switch apart so we just uh, gently pried off the face piece right here and then we uh, pried apart the uh, two halves of the case there's little there's these little pins that hold it here you can see the two little round holes on the bottom there are little pins that hold it there's one pin here and the other pin I've got in my hat so anyway we're going to uh, try to delicately delicately clean the contacts in here like I said I have some spray contact cleaner that's going to help with this so we'll see if we can clean this up and get it back together successfully and then we'll see if this operates any better all right we've got the switch back together we uh, used a couple of little files here little emery boards a little uh, q-tip action a little bit of electrical cleaner and some WD-40 and we put the switch back together so we'll put it back in the car see if this works any better after the contacts have been All right, we've got the newly cleaned switch back in here let's see how we did much better I would say that is usable not putting uh, extra pressure on it or anything it's just uh, light touch so I would call that a success let's do so the other full one. disclaimer even though I've got these uh, switches up and running again and working much better I did actually order a couple of switches off of Amazon yesterday that were I believe they were thirty dollars for the pair and dimensionally it sounds like they are going to fit they almost look identical to these rocker switches so before we button this all back up we're going to see what the new switches look like and see if they're a direct fit it's obviously better to go with a new switch if possible but we'll see like I said how accurately they follow these switches and whether they fit in this opening without any modifications so we'll wait to actually plug this back in and we'll see what those switches look like when they arrive tomorrow I think they arrive tomorrow but in the meantime we'll work on the passenger side and see if we can get this switch to uh, operate a little bit better this switch is operating better right now than in the uh, driver side was so there's probably a little bit less work to do on this switch but let's pop it out and we'll do the same process So just going through the uh, passenger side switch and visually I can see why the driver side switch isn't working quite as well as a passenger side switch it's due to these two little nubs on the top of this contact down here on the driver side those are worn down almost flush and you can see these two little contacts sit up a little bit proud here so uh, that's why it takes a little bit more effort I think for the uh, driver side switch to work because those little nubs are worn away on the driver side switch where they're still present here on the passenger side switch so just thought I'd show you that quickly anyway we filed those contacts down as well as all of the little contacts within the switch themselves you can probably I don't know if you'll be able to see this it probably won't focus all those contacts in there basically have all been cleaned up so that's ready to go back together and back in the car all right here we go on the test for the passenger side switch reinstalled let's give her a shot pretty good so switches are now working so we're happy about that I think we'll leave the windows down for now. All right, let's move on to something else. Again, we'll wait for those new switches to come in and we'll check them out tomorrow. But for the meantime, these are working perfectly. So uh, 
we'll call that uh, job a success and we'll move on to something All else. Right, before we put the uh, driver's side door panel back on, I wanted to uh, address one other little issue where the previous owner's done a, a quick uh, fix here on the mirror mounting. I'm assuming it uh, was coming off, so we decided to put this Robertson screw in here. I think it should have a set screw in here inside. My understanding is that there is a plate on the bottom here that the mirror slides onto, and the plate is held on, I think, with two fixed nuts on the inside of the door skin. Uh, what we want to do is we want to remove this and see exactly what's going on and uh, what's precipitated the use of this uh, Robertson screw here instead of the proper set screw. So hopefully not opening a can of worms here, but I do want to fix this. It is a little wobbly. It's not in danger of coming off. It does not move downwards, but it does move upwards. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with the bracketry underneath. So let's get to the bottom of this and see if we can make this a little bit better. All right, I pulled the set screw out from the passenger side, and as you can see, it's just a little pointed tip and a little uh, slotted head. So I've got a uh, small bolt here I think we can do the same thing with our Dremel. We can just cut that off to the appropriate length and uh, cut a slot in the head and hopefully that will solve our problem with the mirror here on the driver's side. So hopefully this is going to be a quick fix. Hopefully that is not stripped out on the mirror itself. Otherwise we'll have to come up with another fix. But I think it's okay. But let's find out shortly. Let me do the uh, modifications to this guy and we'll come back and see if that works. Alright guys, here's what we made. So we're hopefully that's going to work. We'll try her out now. And uh, if it works, we can celebrate. If not, we'll go back to the drawing board. All right, that worked perfectly, actually. Nice and tight now. No wobble up and down. No wobble back and forth. We'll just confirm that the power window still works. This little rubber tab could cover this a little bit more. Probably needs to be stretched a little bit, but much better than that old Robertson screw that was sticking out of there. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. So we'll just confirm that the power windows still work. And then we'll call it good. We'll put the door panels back on the driver's side. All right, let's see if these power mirrors still work. So here's your little switch here in the uh, dash with a little uh, switch for passenger side, driver's side, and then you get the toggle. So let's uh, fire this thing up and see if they still work. See if this is real luxury, not to be found in any of my triumphs. So here we go. Perfect. Perfect. Let's try the passenger side. That is real luxury. Real Italian luxury. All right, we're good to go. And listen to that blow pump just rock. Oh yeah, baby. You got to have faith. All right, we've given the uh, door panels a quick wipe down with Mother's VLR, and we'll uh, install the door handles back on and the cranks before. So I've just done the uh, surround with the uh, Back to Black by Meguiar's, and we're going to do the backs here with some Autosol. Let's see what they look like in the end. This car just hasn't had a lot of uh, love and attention for the last 15 years, so we're going to change that. Going to make it look... Like a beauty, Can it you is. Tell the difference. That looks a heck of a lot better than it did. Let's have a look at the uh, the passenger side that hasn't been touched, and maybe that'll give you a little bit better comparison. Let's wander around the other side of the car. There's what they did look like. It's a huge difference just with a couple of minutes of effort and the right products. Huge difference. All right, driver's side door panel is all back together and looking good. It cleaned up uh, nicely. So it's got a little bit of uh, patina on it, still 40 years old, and it's still looking pretty darn good. So, all right, let's move on to the uh, passenger side and we'll put that side back together. And then I think we'll call it an end to this video for the day. All right, guys, we're going to call it a night out here. And we've almost accomplished uh, number five. Almost able to cross that off the list. As mentioned, we'll wait for those two new switches to come in. And if they look to be a better option than the stock switches, then we'll put those in. If not, the stock switches will stay. And we'll just put the ashtray back in and button the uh, center console back up. 
other than that, the door panels look good, the mirrors look good, everything operates as it should. So I think we're about ready to start a new project, and I'm thinking that the next project I'm going to start will probably be this steering column and the steering column switches. Uh, some of you might know, or some might not know, that the uh, turn signal stock is broken off, and I've got a new three position switch to put in this column. So I believe that will mean that the steering wheel needs to come off as well as the sheathing of that column and then we can take a look at uh, replacing that switch. I'm not really looking too f looking forward to that. It looks like kind of a fiddly job, but obviously one that needs to be done. So other little jobs like, uh, you know, keep popping up. I remember Doc mentioned that he wanted me to try to fit that glove box door a little bit better. And I've had taken a quick look. It should be a, f I'm not going to, you know, knock on wood, it should be an easy job. Uh, looks like it's just a little bracket that I can move backwards, but we'll see if we can make that fit a little bit better too. So that'll be a small project that we can probably accomplish tomorrow while we tackle this as well. Maybe we'll switch off between easy projects and more difficult projects. All right, that's it for tonight, guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and thanks for subscribing. We'll see you back out here tomorrow.